and we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. This is the new, even more amazing iPad Air. What this device does is extraordinary. You can browse the web with it. It is the best browsing experience you've ever had. It's phenomenal to see a whole web page right in front of you and you can manipulate with your fingers. It's unbelievably great. Way better than a laptop. Way better than a smartphone. And you can turn iPad any way you want. Up, down, sideways, it automatically adjusts however you want to use it. And again, to see the whole web page is phenomenal. Right there, holding the internet in your hands. going to introduce today iPad 2, the second generation iPad. So what is iPad 2? What have we learned? What can we improve? Well, it is an all new design. And the first thing is, it's dramatically faster. Up to twice as fast on CPU performance, up to nine times faster on graphics, and the first iPad was no slouch. We've built in some cameras for video. We've got a rear camera out the back, and we've got a front-facing camera out the front. I'm Donald Bell for CNET.com. We're here at Apple's iPad 2 launch event, and I'm holding the iPad 2. And all the same prices, all the same capacities as last year's, uh, but you're now getting a much thinner design, a lighter design, and also getting a faster processor. There's a, there's a dual core A5 processor in here. It is time at long last to unbox the iPad mini, or as we call it around here, the unicorn. Let's check it out. Hey, out you come. Wow. That is a lightweight tablet. It seems like it weighs about as much as an iPhone. Okay. All you third gen iPad owners, I have unfortunate news. Yes, there is a new iPad, a fourth generation iPad. And what does that mean? Well, it does seem that in one calendar year, we've made two generational leaps instead of one. And if you bought a third gen iPad, I'm sorry because you don't have the cutting edge iPad anymore. If you have not bought an iPad, it's actually really good news because this is an improvement over the third gen iPad, at least in terms of the processor. Yes, we call it iPad Air. You can see the bezel 
is 43% thinner than the previous version, making it more comfortable to hold in your hand. And the one most requested feature to add to iPad mini is a beautiful retina display. And that's what we're going to do today. It feels exactly the same as last year's model. Still really light, really compact, and yes, that screen is 7.9 inches, 2048 by 1536. That is the same resolution as the 9.7 inch iPad. So you're actually getting better pixel density in this model. This is it, it's the new iPad Mini 3, and it's a good thing we liked last year's model so much because it's basically unchanged in 2014. It is the thinnest iPad we have ever made, just 6.1 millimeters thin. That's 18% thinner than their first iPad Air. Here's the original first iPad next to the new iPad Air 2. The new iPad Air 2 is so thin, you can stack two of them and still be thinner than the original iPad. If you want to get a little bit more expensive, go with the iPad Mini 4, which has Touch ID, a faster A8 processor, and can handle split-screen multitasking for supported apps. In just five years, iPad has transformed the way we create, the way we learn, and the way we work. So we asked ourselves, how could we take iPad even further? Today, we have the biggest news in iPad since the iPad. This, this is the iPad Pro. It's the most capable and powerful iPad we've ever created. It is chalked full of amazing advanced technologies and innovation. So how big is the screen on the iPad Pro? It's 12.9 inches on that diagonal. Why 12.9 inches? Well, here, let me tell you a little secret about its size. Let's put next to it our previous largest iPad. That's iPad Air 2. If you look at the width of the iPad Pro, it is the same as the height of the iPad Air. And then we take that height and we make a four by three ratio. And now you have an iPad big enough to run your full iPad Air apps with more room side by side. It is an incredible display. It is 2732 by 2048 pixels. Do the math, it's 5.6 million pixels. The iPad Pro is Apple's biggest tablet yet, and the company even thinks that you could use this thing instead of a laptop. But is that true? Firstly, tell me, Andy, having used it, how does the size impact productivity? It, it just makes everything a lot easier. You've got so much more screen real estate to see web pages look much better when they're big. Working on text documents, just writing word processing, such a basic task, but it's made much better by having a big screen. And of course, when you can now use two apps side by side, having that bigger screen makes that so much easier to do. Apple finally has a new entry-level iPad, and that's gonna be a great thing if you're looking for an iPad that's affordable and works with Apple Pencil. The new iPad, called iPad, starts at 329 and looks a lot like the 9.7-inch iPad Pro that debuted in 2016. This model comes in 32 or 128 gigabyte storage, and it starts at 329 or goes up to 429. Everything here is just faster and snappier. Apple talked about their ProMotion display with their 120 hertz refresh rate. It does back up the claims of being really buttery smooth. You've just gotta try it and see it. Touch ID is also faster. And let me tell you right now, fast, don't lie. We have to talk about the Apple Pencil and its 20 millisecond latency. This has been improved from the previous iPad Pro. Uh, I can tell you it's just a slight, slight difference but it really does make all the difference when it feels like a one-to-one -one relationship with the pencil and the new iPad. So now our most affordable iPad has support for our most creative tool, Apple Pencil. We're providing a high-resolution touch system with sub-pixel precision to this iPad. 
This will enable ultra-low latency, pencil support, and the same tilt and pressure sensing that had made Apple Pencil such a hit. Do you get a Mac or do you get an iPad? This is a question that Apple has asked us for years and it's still really hard to answer because the iPad and the Mac are still pretty different computing types. The iPad Pro does double down on its strengths. It's a much faster processor, there's a nicer pencil, but you have to buy a new one, and it works via USB-C, although it doesn't work with all accessories. There's an A12 processor and 64 or 256 gigabytes of storage inside the new Mini, which starts at $399, the same price as the older one. It looks just like other Minis you've known before. There's a pretty big bezel. There's Touch ID, there's a headphone jack. But it adds support for Apple Pencil, meaning you can draw on it just like Apple's other iPads. The smart keyboard, which you can't use with a regular iPad, you used to need a Pro for it. Well, now you take the three dots on this, line it up with the three dots here, and then through a little bit of magnetism and origami, you can fold it down like this. You now have something that is much more laptop-like than the iPad was on its own. That's right, the M1 chip is not just in the Mac, it's now in iPad Pro, and it's gonna blow you away. From blazing performance for vector and raster tools in Affinity Designer, to rendering the most detailed designs with Shaper 3D, to adding complex effects to 4K videos in LumaFusion, iPad's expansive display comes bursting to life with M1's amazing graphics performance.